Hello guys, my name is Vijay. I'm working as Senior Lead Engineer in F0. In this session, let us understand about how to apply Client ID Enforcement Policy to your new API. Before we go ahead, right, I request you to have a glance at the playlist that I have created for API policies. So far, I have covered HTTP caching policy and message logging policy. And uh, before we go ahead, right, I assume that you know how to add an API within the API manager. If not, right, uh, what I will do, uh, I'll be adding one more video uh, within the same playlist uh, uh, to understand how to add an API and how to register your uh, uh, Mule application within the API manager. So you can go ahead with that video and you can uh, resume this particular session. So the client ID enforcement, uh, the purpose of the client ID enforcement policy is to allow access only to the authorized client applications. It comes under compliance. So this is one of the policies that can be applied to applied on all the layers of api led connectivity based on the requirement or necessity. Now, before we go ahead, right, uh, let's understand uh, some few basics that I see. Um, so you need to have an understanding that, um, let's say in this session, I'll be working with uh, BMS hyphen SAPI, uh, but in real time, right, we'll have uh, api led connectivity, right? So we'll have uh, applications in the system layer, process layer, and also in the experience layer. So if, uh, as I told you, right, you might have to, or uh, your necessity may be like you have to apply the client ID enforcement on, on all the three uh, Mule uh, api led connectivity applications, okay? So in this session, I'll be taking only one application and I will be applying uh, client ID enforcement on the same. Now, um, so, uh, you need to understand that uh, this uh, this is the sandbox environment, okay? So, uh, but in real time, right? You'll have something like a dev uh, test environment and or prod environment or staging environment like that. Now, whatever the applications that you deploy in one environment, right? Uh, you have to deploy the same applications uh, in the other environment as well, okay? So, uh, whatever the policies that you apply on these applications or application, you have to apply the same policy in the uh, test environment or production environment as well okay so this is the uh, this is the uh, understanding that you need to have now this is the api uh, specification that i have pre prepared and uh, this is uh, the same what i have published to the exchange and i have created a uh, simple mule application based on the api specification and deployed to sandbox environment and also finally i have added it as an api in the api manager if you check here the policy is not yet uh, applied to uh, this api bms hyphen sapi so let me make a request to one of the endpoints from postman if i click on send right we got the re response uh, there is no client id and client secret uh, that are required for the time being so this is a problem, right? Anyone who has this uh, URL can send any kind of, uh, I mean, any number of requests at any point of time. Okay, so <clears throat> we have to apply the policy here. And um, so let's apply policy, add policy. And as mentioned in the PPT, it comes under compliance. So click on compliance and select this, next. Now first, uh, I mean, if we discuss about this side, uh, these, these are the two ways we can apply the uh, client ID enforcement policy. Let's go ahead with the first default option that is custom expression. And uh, you have to pass uh, your client ID and client secret in the headers uh, while sending the request. So click on apply. So once you apply the policy, right, you have to, uh, if you want to access uh, this API, right, uh, let me send the request and see what happens. This might take some time, so um, let's wait. Let's see the same thing in the logs. If you see here, applied policy client ID enforcement. Uh, okay, so we are good. The policy is applied. Now let's make a request from any point exchange. So this is the API that I, I published to the exchange. So you have to click on request access. So click uh, select the API instance. So the API instance is in order to understand right you have to click on settings and you see this is the api instance id so now you can create an application so let me uh, 
create a new application i'll some i'll put something like uh, request okay so this is the application name so this will be displayed in the contracts here uh, here so for now you see api instance contracts are zero so once once i click on uh, uh, create and request access right i'll be able to see the same so uh, let me show that to you i refresh this yeah see with the same name i was able to see one application uh, it is displaying here by default it is approved now we can also see how to enable manual approvals of api um, of api contracts that we'll see later in the same session so for the time being let me copy the client id that this is the new client id and client secret now uh, if i make a request right to this to the same endpoint it will say authentication denied 401 unauthorized so um, we have to pass the client id and client secret along uh, i mean along with the request now so because we have applied uh, with custom expression right uh, policies so here we have already applied the uh, the policy uh, in this way using custom expression so we have to pass it as headers in the headers the client id and client secret you have to pass in the headers so let me go to the postman and enable this client id and client secret you see here it is like expecting client id and client secret you can change this if you want now i got the new client id and client secret right so i have to pass them client id and client secret let me send a request and I should be able to get the response back. Now, by any chance, if I uh, pass an incorrect uh, client ID, right, for example, if I send the request, right, it will say invalid client. Okay. Now, let me pass incorrect client secret, it will say invalid client once again. So, if any of these is incorrect, right, it, it will say it will respond with invalid client. If both of them are good it will give the response so we are good till here so uh, what we can do let's apply uh, the same policy in this way like http basic authentication header now click on save the policy was updated successfully i think we'll see the same in the logs as well if you see here right uh, when i pass the client id and client secret i was able to see them properly here because i have enabled the debug logs if you go to logging right i have enabled the debug logs for this application by passing this as a package value okay that is why uh, i am able to see uh, each and everything in uh, very detail so now you see uh, we have uh, changed the policy a bit right so that's why uh, it got applied once again and we could see the corresponding logs here okay uh, now what we can do if i if i make the request right it will uh, say authentication denied why because now previously it is expecting uh, the client id and client secret to be passed uh, in the form of headers now it won't accept that way okay so i'll uncheck these two so you have to pass it as a http authentication header right so you so it is like basic authentication you can pass the username and password here i mean the client id and client secret as the username and password here now let me take the client id and and client secret and set and make a request now you see we got a response back so let's verify the logs here if you see here right uh, it has taken the client id and client secret in this format so this is the base 64 format and that is why you are not able to see the uh, client id and client secret the normal uh, string right you can apply this kind of uh, transformation logic so basic and uh, let's let me copy this uh, i'm passing this uh, string okay so because it is already in the, in the base 64 format right we we have to uh, convert it to 
the normal string. So we have to use from base 64 and you have to import this particular module. Okay, so this is how you can uh, fetch the actual client ID and client secret from the base 64 format. Now, if I if you verify right, so this is matching with the client ID and this is matching with the client secret. So this is um, one of the advantages like even though the debug logs are enabled, uh, uh, I mean, uh, this client ID and client secret will be uh, displayed in the base 64 format in the logs section. Okay, so we have seen uh, how to apply the policy using custom expression, how to apply the policy using HTTP basic authentication header. Okay, now, now for example, uh, if you want to, if you see here, right, uh, as soon as we, uh, we request the access uh, within the exchange, right? It is getting auto approved, right? If you see, it is like auto approved. Okay. Now, what if you want to uh, convert this as a or enforce uh, it as a manual approval, right? So let's see the documentation. It is the knowledge base article. So current, uh, if you see here, right? You have to apply SLA tiles for the manual approval. Okay. So let me uh, go to SLA tiles and uh, Add as an SLT. So what I will do, I'll add few SLTs, something like gold and number of requests. Let's say we'll keep it as 10. Time period is one minute. So click on add. So this way I have added uh, three SLTs. Now, now let's say if I make a request now, right? Okay. Uh, it will the request will not be auto approved. So let's go to the exchange and click on request access. Select the same API instance. And if I create a new application, um, the request, um, so click on create. Now it will ask you to select SLA tier. So let's say if you select gold, right? Uh, click on request access. So now it will not be auto approved new application pending approval okay this is how we'll get an email um, when when it is uh, meant for manual approval so now if you see in the contracts right uh, see so this is how it will uh, allow allow the other operations team or uh, whoever uh, have the access to approve it or reject it right so it will show, uh, it will give options to them. Now I'll click on approve. So once this is approved, right, we'll get one more email. See, application registration approved. This is how we'll get an, uh, an acknowledgement. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now this is how you can uh, enforce uh, the request uh, within the exchange, right, for a manual approval. Now, because we have created new application, so we have to uh, get the new client ID and client secret. So how we can get that? Uh, okay, here, if you see my applications is there, click, click on the same. Now, this is the contract, right? Request hyphen client threads. So click on this. Now here you'll be able to see the client ID and client secret. Client ID and client secret. Now, you might have a question that, okay, two, we have two contracts for the same uh, API. So if I send a request uh, by using these client credentials, will it work or not? Yes, it will work. So let me send the request on the previous uh, client ID and client secret itself. So it is working, okay? Now, now the new credentials are like this. Click on send. See, this is also working. So, if you have multiple contracts, right, for the same API, uh, okay. So, all if you if you request with a different client ID and client secret also, which are already approved, okay, it will it will let you access the Mule API, and it will respond.
okay so this is how you can uh, enforce uh, manual approval of api contracts now this is the point that you have to remember unless so now if you have a question like okay uh, we have created uh, selectors but uh, we, we might get uh, um, limit exceeded so that will not happen because you see here right uh, unless a rate limiting policy is applied requests won't be limited so the values that entered for the sla are just inform informational that's it so if i be, uh, it's a uh, gold sla right we have created a uh, application for gold sla okay gold now if i make request within one minute for more than 10 times also it will approve it will accept four five six seven eight nine ten eleven there is no limit on the number of requests okay in this instance because unless until you apply rate limiting policy uh, the number of requests will will not come into the effect okay this is the point that you have to uh, remember okay so i hope you you got something out of this